but one of the things that I think we could um, constructively uh, explore a little more in future years um, is the other side of the question. I, I mean, I, I spent a great deal of time in my own work focusing upon, if you like, the problem of religion, and that's not going to go away. I'm going to continue to struggle with that. But there's also the other side to it, which is, well, how do we conceptualize in Indian civilization in a different way if this category is not functioning adequately? Um, and one way to do that, not the only way, um, is to um, actually spend a little more time looking at um, the history of Indian civilization and the kind of um, knowledge systems um, that have been produced uh, in this society um, and, and think through some of those as potential conceptual models. Now, there's a clear danger in uh, a direction one could go in in that direction, which is a kind of nativism, which I think w uh, w one always has to be aware of. But nevertheless, um, unless we're going to suggest, which I certainly do not want to suggest, that the history of uh, Indian intellectual thought is irrelevant to modern India, then I think we need to spend some time thinking about conceptual models we can develop that are more sensitive to the specifics of the Indian situation. But one of the things that um, concerns me about the field in which I am disciplined, religious studies, is that it's actually fairly young in, in, in the sense of religious studies separate from theology. And it's still overwhelmingly dominated by Christian theological paradigms. Uh, one way to narrate my own work to myself um, is that the struggle that I'm constantly working with in looking at, in, at, at classical Indian philosophical traditions is how do I make sense of these traditions, interpret them, particularly in the medium of the English language, which is the medium in which I write, and, and most of the people I'm writing for uh, in the Anglo-American context, given that the, the vernacular, the categories, the theoretical frameworks that I'm um, provided with um, are... Christian theological, even when they appear as secular, they're still con continuing some of those tropes. So um, and, and at some point, I, I would find it very useful to think about the practical questions. How do you set up religious studies or whatever you would call it in India um, without just replicating um, what's gone on in the Anglo-American sphere. Um, and, and, and that's a theoretical and practical question at the same time. And one, one way in which we have to think about that is through the question of the institution, of the university, and the place of the university in modern India. One of the things that was brought up at the beginning of this conference, which we haven't really discussed, it came up in, in, um, uh, in Laurie's paper to an extent, um, is the broader question of reviving the social sciences um, uh, and, and, and pulling people back in, or as I think Balu put it at the beginning, um, making, making the questions and the theories and the approaches of interest enough that it will attract young Indians to study their own culture um, in, into what in the West we would call humanities. I much have enjoyed this conference. And I, I do want to take the opportunity to thank Balu and all the Ghent Brigade for their fantastic <laughs> organization. And I, I also want to say that when things get hot, um, then you know that something's really cooking, and that's a good sign, you know. So uh, <coughs> I, 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 see, I see it in a very, in a very positive way. Um, but my, my uh, Laurie, the first point, Laurie, which is one that Laurie Patton was making, we need, need a clearer picture of what we mean by colonialism and neocolonialism, these terms. Uh, I'm not asking for a definition, but we need to at least discuss those. Um, a second point is that um, a conference called Rethinking Religion in India is obviously going to be about India, but I don't think it's only about India. And in fact, I think that a lot of the processes and the conceptual problems and the problems of translation that we're talking about 
actually have occurred in places like Japan, in China. Uh, they, they've occurred also to indigenous American, Native Americans, uh, and, and so on. And I think that it, it would throw a light on the problem of, of India if we were also looking with a slightly broader perspective. A few books became very controversial in the United States amongst the Hindu communities. One book was an attempt to give a psychoanalytical interpretation of Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. And the other was, amongst other things, also a summary about psychoanalytic interpretation of Ganesha. Created a huge controversy, controversy in the United States, especially amongst the Hindu communities. They felt very insulted, annoyed, humiliated, because the psychoanalytical interpretations, if you know psychoanalysis, uh, make certain sets of claims about uh, you know, figures like Ganesha or Ramakrishna. So when they were jumping up and down with understood indignation, I asked the NRIs the following question, because they said, look, it is a, pro a problem also of insider and outsider, which is a problem which has been discussed to death in religious studies, as to who should teach Hindus. And these NRIs find that, found that, at least representatives of the NRIs, that all these problems about misrepresentation of Indian uh, culture comes because most of the teachers who teach are not practicing Hindus, and they're mostly white Europeans, Americans. Then I asked them the following question. All right, let's suppose we replace all the white Americans and put all Indians there. What are they going to tell about Ganesha? Are they going to read the Puranas to the students? What exactly is the kind of interpretation they're going to give? So unless we have an alternative way of presenting Hinduism as a religion, there is simply no point in going around criticizing because even if you put a Hindu there and he uses psychoanalysis, he'll come to more or less similar conclusions. Or you say, I don't teach psychoanalysis. Then you don't teach sociology of religion, you don't teach psychology of religion, no psychoanalysis of religion. So what are you going to teach about Hinduism at all? Now this is a question which keeps on coming up, but we are not yet adequately prepared for it. We meaning now really the intellectual community as a whole. If indeed the Western theories are not acceptable to us, what are our alternatives? We don't have any. At least I don't have any. So in that sense, we cannot teach them, meaning the younger generation, instruct them in Hinduism, because besides, I don't think it's a task of a university to train people to become Hindus. I think the task would be to make them reflect on it. So where can you begin? Well, there's only one place to begin, namely the way we are discussing today. There are people who have problems with it. Just think of what Timothy said on the first day. He raised a question to him at a theoretical level. Well, we need to, it might look as though it is unconnected to the practices of daily life, but trust me, we have no better ways of doing it. We simply don't. If it was there, we would not be, as Madhu calls it, we were not hair splitting at all. Problem is, you're grappling with something at the moment, we don't have clear answers to. Uh, I would just venture to make a suggestion, just one. It seems to be that we can endlessly discuss as to what went wrong or what needs to be done more in terms of how many sessions, whether to include Islam, Judaism, etc. or not. But uh, as an academic who has spent about 35 years teaching in Delhi University now, the problem is more basic. And the problem is having an extensive debate upon the legitimacy of teaching of religion in Indian universities, colleges, and schools. I'm sure that as experts, you are well aware of the fact that the Indian state, the Indian press, the Indian academia does not distinguish between study of religion and propagation of religion. This is a massive confusion.